I'm glad to introduce Professor Friedrich Wagemann for his uh, next lecture about uh, Leibniz cohomology. Please. Now, can, can you hear me now? Yeah, maybe this is better. Can you say something just so I have a feedback? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. We can hear you properly. Okay. Yeah, so I, I want to come back to yesterday's question. So there are parameters. There are functors from the category of Lie algebras to the category of Leibniz algebras over K and from the category of Leibniz algebras over K to the category of Lie algebras over K. Yeah. And uh, from Lie algebras to Leibniz algebras, you can always look at, at uh, Lie algebra as being a Leibniz algebra. Yeah. And from Leibniz algebra to D algebra, so you can take your Leibniz algebra and take H D, which is a D algebra. But these two functors are very far from being an equivalent of categories. Yeah, so these two categories are very different. Yeah. Uh, so for example, um, we have seen that for any representation uh, M of the Lie algebra G, uh, the Haley semi direct product is a Leibniz algebra. And if M is simple, then uh, the Hemi semi direct product of M and G, uh, when you take its associated Lie algebra, it is just G. Yeah. So you have many, uh, many. Uh, many Leibniz algebras which have the same uh, associated Lie algebra. Yeah, so this is very far from being an equivalent of categories. And uh, so maybe, um, I don't know, uh, we can also, uh, we had, yesterday we had expressions like for all Leibniz, Algebra, there exists a Lie algebra such that, for example, H Lie equal to G. This is true. Uh, this is just, uh, yeah, hey, yeah. And for all Lie algebras, there exists a Leibniz algebra such that uh, H Lie. G. This is true also. Yeah. Uh, so, um, for example, uh, take H equal to G. Yeah. So um, maybe this is also a partial answer to what we discussed yesterday. And then the second point is that. Uh, we can also show the converse of theorem 7.1. Yeah, maybe maybe that was the point of departure for your question. I don't know. Uh, so uh, take a finite dimensional B algebra, and uh, if each of HL is non zero, then 
h of g m is zero. So this is the converse. Yeah, this is not the theorem. This is already the converse of this theorem, and this is also true because you can take the spectral sequence. And we had that the spectral sequence at E2 term equal to P of G delta H L P of G M S and converges to uh, this relative homology. Yeah. And now um, by assumption. The E2 term is zero. Yeah. Because if the HLs are all zero, this tensor factor is zero. This means the E2 term is zero. And thus, H relative is zero. And but H relative measures the, the difference between. Uh, Leibniz cohomology and Lie algebra cohomology. So if the difference is zero, then this implies that HL G M S is equal to H G M. But by assumption, this one is zero, and so the other, the other one is zero too. Yeah. So you see. You see that um, one always has to use the hypothesis two times. Yeah, one time in order to make these spectral sequences collapse. Yeah, and then you use it once more. Yeah, and this is exactly the same reasoning which we will have in our main theorem. Yeah, so this. Maybe that was a good idea to present it to you already here. Maybe you have questions. Okay. Okay, then now I will talk about the Leibniz homology of semi simple first Lie algebras. And this is a theorem due to. Um, um, Penguva Spirashvili and uh, Patricia Nidolo. And uh, so, in all the rest of my lectures, I would suppose that K is a field of characteristic zero. And all uh, E Leibniz algebras. And modules or biomodules are always finite dimension. And then the theorem of Patricia and Dodo and Temula Spirashvili. So if I understand right, um, Patricia was a thesis student of uh, Jean Louis Daudet, and uh, was a, um, or, yeah, was a collaborator of uh, Jean Louis Daudet. And if I understand right, they found the same theorem independently. For Patricia, it is uh, part of her thesis at Strasbourg, and yeah. In, and it's also published in Pirashvili's paper from 94, which is called Online Cosmology. 
And the theorem is so now let's G be semi simple, yeah, finite dimensional over a field of delta C0, and uh, M the G module, finite dimensional D module, then HL of G M is zero for all P greater or equal to one. And there's a there's a mistake in the lecture notes. Yeah, in the lecture notes I wrote um, p greater or equal to zero, but it is p greater or equal to one. That is a correct statement. Yeah, because you can here have the trivial module and the right invariants of the trivial module are uh, the trivial module, so it's non-zero. Yeah, so it is p greater or equal to one. Yeah, so this is error in the lecture notes. Okay, let's prove this. If M is non trivial. Yeah, and what does this mean? The invariants are zero. Yeah, this is what I mean by non trivial. Then, by Whitehead's theorem, we have H uh, G M zero for all degrees and therefore by the theorem 7.1 I just recall in its converse form but here I use it in the direct form uh, Uh, we can use 
theory, which shifts um, arguments. Yeah? So, uh, HLP plus one of H of G um, K is isomorphic to HLP of G G star S. Yeah? Uh, meaning the co-adjoint module look at as a symmetric module. It is already a symmetric module because it is, we are talking about a Lie algebra here, but this is not uh, a problem. And uh, but this is a direct sum. Of non trivial simple modules because G is still simple and therefore. We have a G S invariance being zero. And thus we obtain H L P of G G star S by what we said before. Zero. But notice, notice that we have one, uh, th that we have a degree shift here. Yeah. So uh, it is for the p plus one space with trivial values that all the p for p greater or equal to zero are zero. Yeah. So the h l one is still zero, but the h -L Zero is not necessarily zero. Actually, HL zero is equal to K. Yeah, so we have here P greater or equal to one and not P greater or equal to zero. Okay. Zero G is equal to K. Okay, so maybe you have questions up to this point. This is in Tolo Pirashvili's theorem. Okay, then we come. To the last part of my lecture, which is our theorem with your papers. And so we will, um, I will present to you two of uh, our theorem and then talk to you uh, yesterday about the consequences. And so one of the consequences is that the category of Finite dimensional bimodules over a semi simple Leibniz algebra is of x dimension equal to two. Yeah, and so this is what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. But today I will talk about the module of semi simple. Let's algebras. So first of all, what is the semi simple Leibniz algebra? So uh, once again, K is a field of zero and all are 
Jesus. Amen. Amen. What is a semi-central brightness algebra? Is a radical of A is contained in the lightness idea. Here, the radical is the biggest. squares we already talked about. Squares. Yeah. And so maybe uh, one could think that um, it would be uh, yeah, other tentatives Would be to say the radical of H must be zero. Yeah. But then all semi simple Leibniz algebras would be E algebras. Yeah, and this is not so interesting. Why would they all be E algebras? Because the Leibniz ideal is an abelian ideal of the Leibniz algebra. Yeah? So when I take the biggest solvable ideal, the Leibniz ideal must be in there. Yeah? And so uh, uh, it is equivalent to the definition to say uh, yeah, or it is equivalent uh, semi-simple H semi-simple is equivalent to saying that the radical is equal to the Leibniz idea. Because I just told you that the Leibniz idea is always contained in the radical because it's the biggest solvable idea and so when I suppose that it is the radical is also included in the Leibniz ideal they are equal yeah and uh, so this is kind of the the right the correct the, uh, yeah, um, definition of the semi simple Leibniz algebra yeah and it is and um, generalization of the notion of semi simple Lie algebra. Yeah? Because for Lie algebra, the Leibniz ideal is zero. And so being included in the zero ideal means being zero. Yeah? So this is a generalization of the notion of semi simple Lie algebra. And in our sense, it is the correct generalization. Okay. Maybe questions? Now, um, an important lemma of our theorem is when you have a series simple Leibniz algebra H, then you can take Leibniz ideal, it's dual, you consider it as a Symmetric H by module, and then you take the uh, invariance on the H leaf, the right invariance, this is zero.
Okay, why is that so? So, first of all, um, uh, we have a Levy decomposition for Leibniz algebra. This is a result due to bonds, but it is a very short paper, so it, it, it is almost uh, evident. Yeah. And this Levy decomposition works for any Leibniz algebra, not only for simple, simple ones, but for any Leibniz algebra. And uh, so any Leibniz algebra can be decomposed as a vector space into the radical and some semi simple D algebra. Yeah, and the, the Leibniz bracket on this is the semi semi direct. So, uh, yeah, what we had uh, in uh, the first lecture, so to take an element of the Yeah, so here y and y prime are the minus idea. And uh, s. And so now, uh, but h is c symbol as the radical. Is equal to uh, the Leibniz idea. Yeah. Uh, and this X semi simple DR. Yeah. And so uh, note that. Uh, S dot like H is equal to like H. Yeah. I mean that any element of the Leibniz idea can be written as an element of S acting on some other element of the Leibniz idea. Yeah. Or as a sum of those. And and this is true because we have the computation we already did once. Uh, yeah, and these are this is a computation we did when we wanted to um, co compute the squares in the ABC direct products. Yeah, so uh, take two of uh, take one of them and take a square. Then this gives x dot y x x, but this is a Lie algebra in the Lie algebra s. So this is the x dot y zero, and so any um, square, any square can be written. S acting as an element of S acting on like so uh, 
And I claim that this shows that the that the space of invariance here is zero. This shows that the space of invariance is zero because uh, now take a linear form, a linear functional, if you want to, in Google's on age uh, and H on I. I have it's minus five. The usual, the usual action as in the real process. Yeah. Now. Uh, suppose I is in life H and S H D. Yeah. H D S and uh, we have five. Evaluated on my age is included in phi of s now it's equal to phi of s of my age is included in s of phi of age. Yeah, and this is zero. For phi is zero yeah, because it vanishes on all the lines and yes. Okay, now we are ready to state the first of our two theorems. Yeah, the first. The first of our two theorems is so H semi simple, semi simple Leibniz algebra over the phi of characteristic zero. H is supposed to be finite dimensional and take now the finite dimensional H by module M uh, with right invariance being zero. Then the Leibniz homology of H is zero. First of all, notice that MH equal to zero implies that M is. Symmetric as a final. Indeed, and the sub final. Was the sub prime module generated by all the x dot m plus m dot x, where this is a left operation and this is a right operation for all m and m and all x and h? Yeah. Yeah, what I want to say m0 is. So, 
actually an anti symmetric so. And so when I take invariance, yeah. And zero is equal to its right invariance, yeah, because we have seen that for anti symmetric bimodule, the invariants are always the right invariants, yeah, because the right operation is zero, the right invariants are equal to the module. And this is included in M H, this is, which is zero, yeah, that means that M zero is zero. And M zero equal to zero means uh, M symmetric. M symmetric. Yeah. Because uh, this is exactly what you have to factor out in order to have it symmetric. Yeah, if you need nothing. You need to factor out nothing in order to be symmetric, then your bimodule is already symmetric. Okay, that is the first step. So M is a symmetric H bimodule. Uh, now consider. The spectral sequence that we had for the for the quotient the Leibniz algebra H leap yeah. uh, and uh, the Leibniz idea. Spectral sequence converges towards the relatives. This is the spectral sequence. I B like H, yeah, and we had a we had a condition on the idea I, yeah, and the condition was that it, it must, the idea must be in the left center, yeah, and the Leibniz idea is in the left center of the Leibniz algebra, so this works here, yeah, and U is uh, and M symmetric, yeah. So uh, by in total, we have that H L P H V like H S is zero for all p greater or equal to one. Yeah, because very simple linear. Thus, the spectral sequence and we have um, H L relative zero for all P Uh, 
And what do we have? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just want to put fast conversion. And we have HL and being HL zero. So now this term here, I, I've told you the HL zero is the right invariant. Yeah. S star H least right invariant. Yeah. And these are zero by the lemma. So now I can jump to the conclusion I wanted to jump to before H of N of H H D N is zero. And now you see the same mechanism as I told you in the beginning. We first use the vanishing of cohomology to show that the spectral sequence and that the relative cohomology here is zero. And then now we use it once again in order to show that the cohomology is zero. Because up to now we have only shown that uh, conclusion. H L H because this is the relative space which measures the difference between the two, but Again, by we have now um, uh, so this one is zero, so. Why? Yeah, because this was important in Hirashvili's theorem. Okay, so maybe you have questions. No questions. Okay, then we have 15 minutes left for the last step. The last step is um, when we have now a semi simple Latin algebra H over a field of characteristic zero and final dimensional. And M, the finite dimensional uh, G F H by module. Uh, any finite dimensional, uh, any Great. 
theta bar equal to two and sequence. Goes to H and zero goes to H symmetric goes to on H on goes to H at one. Yeah, so um, this describes completely the cohomology of uh, semi simple lattice algebra with uh, values in any finite dimensional binomial. Yeah? So the cohomology spaces are all zero starting from degree greater or equal to two. And what about the cohomology spaces HL1 and HL0? They fit into this. Exact sequence. Okay. I told you about M0. I just we just recalled M0. M sim was the, the, the quotient. Yeah. Here M sim is by definition the M divided by M0. These are then this is a symmetric module, so I can take the left or right invariants. This is the same. Under the E algebra H D, and these are the H yeah, H module homomorphisms. Yeah, let's say left H module homomorphism. And zero is anti symmetric, so the right operation is zero anyway, and take the left. Uh, Module homomorphisms. Okay, this is our theorem, the main theorem we want to talk about. So you see, you see that the theorem before was just kind of a, um, a step in order to, to come to this thing. So the first remark is um, first we use a composition series for finite dimension of M in order. To reduce the plane with simple X. Yeah. So let me do this in a little bit more detail. Yeah. In B. Uh, can always. Choose a simple sub by module uh, M one in M. Yeah, if M one equal to M is uh, non zero. This is included in simple. Is the only choice. All right. Simple. Yeah. Then as uh, by induction.
by the induction with a, a sequence like this. Yeah? And then we continue with the quotient bimodule. Yeah? And in the quotient bimodule, we take again a simple sub bimodule and we do this. Uh, and th this uh, uh, makes the dimension go down strictly at each uh, step yeah? uh, until we come to the simple one. Yeah? As M is finite dimensional and uh, with and and simple. Yeah. And now uh, the, the long exact sequence in homology associated to these short exact sequences Coefficients. These, I think these here uh, show the same right induction for M in case it goes. This is the first step. And this is a standard reduction step uh, from, from a finite dimensional module or bimodule to uh, a simple one, yeah, by uh, composition theory. First step. So maybe maybe I should stop here and uh, do. Uh, so this is the first reduction step, and then there come three steps in the proof yeah the first step of these three steps is that you take the special case for symmetric modules symmetric bimodules then the second step is the special case of anti-symmetric bimodules and the third step is then to use the standard exact sequence to to go to the arbitrary bimodule yeah, but this I, I will repeat tomorrow, and so this gives me the opportunity to, to repeat also the theorem tomorrow, um, and, and then tomorrow I will talk about the, the applications of this theorem. So thank you for today, and I'm open for your questions. Um, hi. Thank you, Frederick. Okay, there is I a just question. have one question, please. Okay. Uh, so, um, so far you, you didn't use yet um, the hypothesis saying that uh, all algebras are uh, finite dimensional. So uh, I am wondering why it will not work for uh, infinite dimensional algebras as well. Um, yes. Um, actually, um, we used finite dimensionality of the algebra two. Yeah, uh, what, uh, uh, the part which is still on the blackboard is the part where we use the finite dimensionality of the module, of the bi-module. Yeah? But for the algebra, we use, yeah, we use finite dimensionality of H3 in order uh, 
and we we also use uh, so here you can say it's only H D, which has to be finite dimension. What about H itself? But we also use the implied H as finite dimension because we wanted to apply the theorem of the Tolo Pirajili. So we need that the Leibniz ideal is also finite dimensional, and uh, this means that H is also. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, so you could, could have asked, why do we know, uh, uh, why do we use finite dimensionality in Ntolo Pirashvili? In Ntolo Pirashvili's theorem, we use explicitly Weil's theorem. Yeah, and Weil's theorem is only true for finite dimensional modules and modules. Thank you very much. You're okay, that is another question, please. So, uh, can we defend uh, a Leibniz cohomology of a differentiable manifold? Ah, very good question. That is the question of Jerry Lauder's paper. Yeah, Jerry Lauder. Uh, in 19. And I think I have it cited in our lecture notes. Let me check. Yeah. It, it, it is called Leibniz cohomology and uh, Leibniz cohomology for differential for differentiable manifolds. Yeah. And so what is written in this paper is that um, there's one problem. Yeah. The exterior differential of differential forms is a differential form yeah so it is tensorial it is c infinity of m where m is now the manifold it is c infinity of m linear but this is not true for the leibniz uh, co-boundary operator yeah, the Leibniz co-boundary operator is not C infinity of M linear, so it is not tensorial. Yeah, and this is the, the big um, problem. <laughs> Thank you. You're okay, welcome. Any, any other questions? I, I actually have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, I'm trying to... Turn on my camera, but I can't. <laughs> Sorry, um, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was, I, 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 in the beginning of your talk today, you mentioned a question that was raised yesterday. Yes. About there being uh, an equivalence of categories between um, Lie and Leibniz algebras. And, and I said and, that it is not the case. Yeah. But then the question, uh, like the other uh, next best thing you could have would have would be not an equivalence of categories, but uh, an adjointness. Um, yes. So if you take the functor, you know, like every Lie. Um, mm -hmm. algebra is a is a is a Leibniz algebra. So, so that functor seems to be both right and left exact. Um, oh, no, hold on. Um, yeah. So the question is: Is there a left or right uh, adjoint to that functor? Very good question. Thank you for your question. Um, I, actually, I don't know what, what I. Um, I kind of, after our work on, on this X um, dimension on the bi modules, I was more uh, involved with the functors between the category of modules of H Lee, H Lee modules and H bi modules. Yeah, and there are 
many functors between these categories. And uh, there I checked uh, adjoints and equivalences of categories and all that stuff. But uh, actually for, for H and H Lee itself on the, on the level of algebras, I did not check. Okay. Actually, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm aware of uh, work of Jeffrey Powell. Yeah, maybe Jeffrey does this in his work. Yeah, this is very, very recent work. My colleague from Angers. Yeah, so. This is a good place to look for this. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a look. Uh, and also, thanks again for the, the awesome class. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Any other questions, comments, or remarks? Okay, if not, uh, let's thank Friedrich again.